take a walk on the wild side when readers are introduced to Mr. X-Ray and Pranky as competing harbingers tasked with guiding lost souls to death or damnation. Who will be their next victim and how far will Mr. X-Ray go to escape his eternal position? Let's find out in Hyde Street number one from Image Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Hyde Street number one. You know, I'll say this for Jeff Johns, he has a knack for telling stories that don't really grab you immediately. They grow on you after a while. We saw that storytelling style in action with Red Coat and Rook Exodus, and we see it here in Hyde Street number one. Jeff Johns paints a vibrant picture of a supernatural world with eclectic characters. But what's missing? The hook. You'll like Hyde Street number one for the vibe and the atmosphere, but it just won't grab you. We begin with an opening prologue that we first saw printed in the Ghost Machine one-shot special, depicting an otherworldly boy scout who helps an old lady across the street near a construction zone. As they walk, the boy scout knowingly asks the old lady about the deadly secrets she keeps in her past. Before the quote-unquote good deed is done, the old lady falls under an oncoming steamroller. As a side note, and after all these months, the opening prologue from Jeff Johns and Ivan Reese is still wonderfully effective. The supernatural Twilight Zone-esque vibe of the opening suggests stories about bad people getting what they deserve. So this blend of revenge and the supernatural is right up our alley. The Boy Scout, who we soon come to know as named, or nicknamed anyway, Pranky, skips up Hyde Street when he sees the good deed earned him another point on one of his scout badges. He's too preoccupied with his latest delivery to notice he's about to run into another inhabitant of Hyde Street a gentleman by the name of Mr. X-Ray. Pranky and Mr. X-Ray have, from what we can tell, similar responsibilities to guide newcomers to death, damnation, or freedom as they choose. But the two definitely do not get along. Pranky enjoys his work maybe a little too much, and Mr. X-Ray does what he must do to earn his freedom, even at the cost of other souls and other lives. This is our first introduction to the meeting between Pranky and Mr. X-Ray, even though they've known each other for some time. Johns begins to set the foundation of Hyde Street by hinting at the prospect of jobs and characters having certain roles and that the, this world has rules. You don't get the full picture right away, but you get enough to understand that Pranky and Mr. X-Ray are peers and to a certain degree competitors for some larger purpose. And that hint of mystery, but with a little bit of nuggets of truth and understanding, is incredibly intriguing. The issue then switches to an extended flashback which takes up the majority of the issue. The flashback shows the origin of Mr. X-Ray as an unscrupulous ad man who was responsible for creating misleading ads for gadgets and doodads in comic books during the 1960s, including the X-Ray specs that he wears. Mr. X-Ray and his artist partner were once responsible for creating the most enticing ads in the business until trouble with embezzlement ruined their careers. Unable to find work with another ad agency, they decided to start their own agency responsible for creating the marketing collateral for everything from sea monkeys to inflatable monsters and x-ray specs and everything in between. If some of the names of those doodads and gadgets sound familiar, well, during the flashback, Johns hints the nostalgia bone with a sledgehammer by tying Mr. X-ray's career to the all-time classic comic ads adult readers saw in every comic up through the 1980s and even a little bit further. There was always an element of shadiness behind those ads that overpromised and underdelivered. so making the creative force behind those ads a main character in a supernatural comic who is forced into a supernatural job as retribution for his unsavory life is kind of unexpectedly cool. As the flashback progresses, we see Mr. X-Ray's partner meet his end after a life filled with regret a visit from Mr. X-Ray's estranged daughter, and a vow to pay a steep price for escape from Hyde Street. I would say overall, Hyde Street number one hits all the right notes for a supernatural tale in the same vein as, say, The Twilight Zone, or a much darker version of Fantasy Island. The world and characters Johns introduces are whimsical, so you find yourself drawn into wanting to know more about them. However, the one thing the issue lacks as a whole is a compelling hook some irresistible reason to come back. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second and the second consistent point that we're finding through all the Ghost Machine titles. The first point, of course, is Jeff Johns as writer and, and his ability to weave those tales and maybe due to the lack of hook in the first issue, they, they sort of grow on you out over time. But the art, however, is always jaw-droppingly good. 
Hyde Street Number 1 is no exception. Ivan Reese and Danny Miki bring their A-game to create a lavish world that cannot contain the edges of whimsy and creepiness that are just hitting around all the edges of every character, every street corner, every vehicle, every building. There's always something there that feels like it's a little out of place that kind of gets your your dander up a little bit and, and makes you feel like there's something otherworldly and unnatural about what you're seeing. Plus, the amount of detail in it, every single panel is impressive. This comic is a work of art. Ghost Machine knows to not skimp on the art on any other comics, and this comic is no exception. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. Jeff Johns introduces readers to Mr. X-Ray, whose given name is Frederick Xavier Ray, of course, you know, X-Ray, so that makes perfect sense. However, there is a real man behind the ads for things like X-Ray Specs and Sea Monkeys. His name was Harold von Braunholt, or Brown Hutt an American mail-order marketer and inventor. So there's your interesting bit of trivia today. I, I can't say for sure if Jeff Johns based this character on that real-life individual, but uh, there are some similarities, obviously, in their career path. Final thoughts, what do you think about Hyde Street number one from Image Comics? Pulls readers into a supernatural world where no past misdeed goes unpunished. Jeff Johns' take on this sort of Twilight Zone-esque storytelling is immediately interesting, and the art team's delivery is top shelf. That said, this first issue is almost all set up, and it kind of lacks a compelling hook that makes you want to return. It's interesting, it's curious, but that's about as far as it goes. Therefore, Hyde Street number one earns a 7.8 out of 10. We like supernatural horror, so a supernatural horror comic with a writer like Jeff Johns and this art team should be the best book of the week. But it just needs that little something extra to get it over the finish line into greatness. It's not quite there, it's close. But what do you think? How high is this comic on your must-read list? Leave a thumbs up if this review was helpful, and drop a comment below with which Ghost Machine title is your favorite so far. I think Geiger started off the strongest, but right now, Rook Exodus is where it's at. Also, Remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.